All right, so I am doing the message this morning because my dad is out of town. Um, he's been out of town for a few days and um, just having some time to uh, um, recuperate and um, cast vision for kind of the next season for the church. And um, I talked with him yesterday, and it sounds like it's been a really good time for him. So I'm thankful that he's had that time to be able to get away for a little bit. Um, So this morning, we're going to be continuing in our reset series, uh, specifically in resetting our minds by looking at the concept of keeping the Sabbath. According to stress.org, Americans are among the most stressed out population in the world. They found that 55% of Americans are stressed during the average day, which is 20% higher than the world average. Even more shocking, Gallup found that 79% of Americans frequently or sometimes encounter stress in their daily lives, while only 17% say that they rarely feel stressed and 4% never do. In addition, the American Psychological Association noted a 30% rise in college students seeking counseling appointments from 2009 to 2015, with 61% of them reporting anxiety and 45% reporting stress in their mental health concerns. Our society is saturated with stress that stems from a variety of factors. One factor that I think has a significant impact on this is the busyness that we submit ourselves to on a regular basis. And based on how our culture views busyness, it is no surprise why we all find ourselves so busy. In 2016, Sylvia Beleza conducted a test in which she discusses in the article research why Americans are so impressed by busyness in the Harvard Business Review. And this was to see how Americans viewed those who are busy. She writes, in a series of experiments, we varied whether a person was described as conducting a leisurely lifestyle or working long hours. For example, in one of the experiments, participants read a short description of a 35-year-old man named Jeff. Specifically, participants in one condition read, Jeff works long hours and his calendar is always full. In contrast, participants in the other condition read, Jeff does not work and has a leisurely lifestyle. After reading these scenarios, participants rated the perceived social status of the person described. In general, we found that the busy person is perceived as high status, and interestingly, these status attributions are heavily influenced by our own beliefs about social mobility. In other words, the more we believe that one has the opportunity for success based on hard work, the more we tend to think that person, who, uh, that people who skip leisure and work all the time are of higher standing. So it is clear based on these findings that we highly value work. And work is good. In Genesis 2, God made Abram and, uh, I'm sorry, Adam and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it. Work was one of the first commands given to Adam. So it is a good and godly thing to work. But when God had finished creating the earth and all that is in it, he made the decision to rest. Genesis 2, 1 through 3 says, Thus uh, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. God had done so much in the first six days and made the intentional decision to rest on the seventh. And why? I don't personally believe God didn't have the power to continue to push through and make more on the seventh day. But I also do think that God had made all that he wanted to in the first six days. And more importantly, he wanted to be an example to us. This action of resting on the seventh day led to a command later on when Moses received the Ten Commandments. In Exodus 28 through 11, God gave Moses the commandment about the Sabbath, saying, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the earth, uh, made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So why is God so serious about the Sabbath? I don't know about you, but I can be pretty terrible at keeping a Sabbath and taking a full day out of the week to rest. Even if the weekend doesn't involve work for my job, I'll often find myself 
uh, finding ways to incorporate other work into those days. And it is hard for me, and many of us, I think, to truly rest. And when I do have time to rest, I often don't know how to do it well. But at the end of the day, rest is something that we need. Even when people like me feel like we don't know how to rest or maybe don't want to rest, we know that we need it. It is important for our physical, emotional, relational, and spiritual health. And I have to say, it is funny that if you look at the Ten Commandments, this is the one that no one seems to make a big deal about. Murder, envy, not loving God, adultery, creating false idols, they all seem worthy of being a part of God's commands. But God chose to include keeping the Sabbath, a day of rest, on there as well. So what are the actual reasons we need to rest? How will it help us? As Matt Capps puts it in his article, Why Do We Need Physical Rest? from the Gospel Project. He says, physical rest is a gift from God. And then he goes on to say, physical rest repairs and rebuilds the body and mind. When we exert ourselves, physically or mentally, we long for the restoration of our energy. Researchers have shown that both the physical stress of manual labor and even the emotional stress of a desk job require subsequent rest for the body and mind to recuperate. He goes on to say that what actually drives us to unrest is rooted in our hearts, usually idolatry. For example, the workaholic sacrifices rest to the God of success, power, and productivity. This pattern can be seen in almost all areas of our life. The good news is God is not silent about our need for rest, nor has he left us without good reason or motivation for rest. We need rest to recuperate from the things that we go through on a daily basis. And again, we know this. For most of us, this probably isn't some grand realization that we need to rest. So I think the bigger question is, why don't we? If we intentionally prioritize so much work in our lives and we know we need to recharge, why do we not prioritize our rest too? I mean, God commands us to take a whole day every week to rest, and that can seem so challenging. But I think something that Cap said in, his, in that article is very insightful. He said that it is idolatry that moves us to unrest. And there are many idols that move us to reject rest or to want to stay busy. But there are three idols that quickly come to my mind. The first is the idol of affirmation. This is something that was basically hit on in the article from Sylvia Beleza earlier. In our culture, it is often seen as worse to not be busy all the time. The busier you are, the better you probably are at getting more done. And the wealthier you probably are because of how much you can accomplish. But at the end of the day, I think for many people... Being busy can look impressive to others, and that is the reason that they want to sound and look as busy as possible. I remember past years of studying for finals in college. There were some years that I felt overwhelmed by the amount of studying that I had, and I actually felt good about it. I felt like I was supposed to have a lot of work, and since all my friends were saying that they had so much to do, wouldn't it be weird if I didn't? And then there were other times where I felt like my work was light, and I felt a little guilty. I felt bad that everyone around me had so much to do, but I didn't. I felt like I needed to do more to make up for it, so I didn't take advantage of the time that was given to me to actually rest and be grateful for an easier schedule for once. This was all because I felt the pressure of wanting to be affirmed for my busyness. I'm sure we have all felt this at some point, boasting in our ability to fill our schedules and sacrifice our free time. But is it really worth it? We lose time that not only can go toward our own recuperation, but also toward personal time with the Lord. God didn't just give us the Sabbath to sleep all day. He wanted it to be a chance for us to rest in him. Unfortunately, our affirmation shouldn't come, I'm sorry, ultimately, our affirmation shouldn't come from one another. It should come from God. His opinion of us matters far more than anyone else's. And since we know that he loves us and cares about us regardless of what we do, we can be sure that he is delighted in any time that we spend with him. God's affirmation not only means more, he gives it abundantly more than we could receive from those around us. The second idol that stands between us and rest is control. Some of us pursue busy schedules and don't allow ourselves to rest because we fear what could happen if we slow down too much. Maybe my stance to not work throughout the whole week weekend would not get, allow me to get as many projects done at my job, could prevent me from getting promoted as quickly, or could mean I don't make as much money as I could otherwise. But we always have to let go of something in order to rest. 
and that can be frightening. As Matt Capps put it, puts it in his Gospel Project article, for some of us, it is a scary thing to consider that we lay down all control and consciousness when we sleep. The most powerful people in all of humanity spend a third of their lives asleep, as helpless as an infant, and the world still progresses. That can be scary. And the idea of taking even more time away to spend a whole day resting and being present with God can feel scary too. But Caps makes this point in his article not to scare us, but to remind us that we are not God. We are not in control. God is in control. Nothing should remind us more of this point than the COVID-19 pandemic. With furloughs, sickness, and even death going on unexpectedly all over our country and our world, we are reminded that no day is guaranteed to run the way we want it to. As much control over our lives as, as we think we have, we never know what could be waiting for us tomorrow. But God does. God knows where we've been, where we are, and where we're headed in ways that we could only dream of knowing. And so ultimately, our trust should come from him, not ourselves. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. If we choose to give a day of work to spend time with him, we are acknowledging that we don't have full control over our situation and trusting that by resting in God, we will end up in a better place than we could ever get to by our own efforts. The third idol that robs us of rest is comfort. At first, this one may seem kind of backwards. Isn't working super hard actually a form of discomfort? Who feels comfortable working all the time? While work has some discomfort, it also can offer numbness to the world around us. I know that there are some who love staying busy constantly because it keeps them from dealing with other issues that need to be dealt with. This could be in the form of relationships, finances, projects around the house, or even addictions. But for many of us, these other things are a lot harder for us to deal with uh, than the minor discomfort of a busy schedule. One of the most timeless tales we see in television shows music and movies is that of the family where the father figure neglects the duties of caring for his family family because he's so constantly busy with work by the end of the movie the father sees the error of his ways and the family is able to again enjoy time with their father who at the beginning of the movie seems so distant why is this a common theme probably because it's based in reality this is something that a lot of families face and not just dads but moms kids and everyone else too It can be more comfortable to make ourselves busy with things that consume our time in ways that we are familiar with than to deal with the areas of our lives in which we need to let God work. Long periods of rest and reflection can help us to identify stuff in our hearts we need to deal with and gives us the space to let God into those areas. We all commit sin, and that sin is a result of a sickness of the heart only redeemable by Jesus. We need time to rest and rejuvenate our hearts And that means maybe making ourselves uncomfortable by making space for us to move into those things in God's power and wisdom. Each of these idols drives us to work longer and harder than we often need to and distracts us from the reality that we need a Sabbath. The reason we need to let go of these idols is actually deeper than just needing to rest our bodies. The Sabbath is also time to be spent with God. An idol is something that replaces our desire for God and distracts us from closely pursuing him. So when we are able to let go of these idols, then we can more clearly focus on him. Mm. To make it even more clear, Jesus is very deliberate in stating this to the Pharisees in Mark 2, 27, saying the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. When we celebrate the Sabbath, the way God intended it, Jesus is our main focus. We turn our eyes to him and find rest and peace in doing so. In Luke 8, Jesus ventured out onto a lake with his disciples. As they were in the boat together, a storm hit and his disciples were terrified. They woke, up, woke him and said, Master, Master, we are perishing. So Jesus quickly commanded the seas to be still and immediately they were. But Jesus asked them, where is your faith? In this passage, the disciples did not understand who they were with. Yes, they did know that Jesus was a great teacher. And yes, they knew him to be a miracle worker. But they did not know truly who he was. If they did, they surely would have been more, had more faith in him as the son of God. 
But how many times are we like this? How many times do we face circumstances in life where we do not know what we have in Jesus and choose to panic instead of trust? In each of the idols I mentioned, the core problem is that we don't trust, that we do trust in ourselves more than in Jesus. We try to receive affirmation from others because we don't feel like we are enough. Or we try to control our situation because we believe if we don't, something bad will happen. Or we try to comfort ourselves by avoiding the things that need to be dealt with and avoiding responsibility and growth. The answer to each of these is in Jesus. We have all the affirmation that we need in Jesus. In John 15, 9, Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Jesus loves us so much that he died for us. If you could know someone better who was willing to die for your sake, would you try to know them better? We can give all our control to Jesus. In Psalm 37, 4, the psalmist writes, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. God is our provider. When we draw closer to him, we can feel more at peace that he is in control because we can trust him more. And the the desires that he gives to us align with his desires because our hearts are becoming more like his. We can face our fears and discomforts through the power of Jesus. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We may try to drive away our fears and discomforts by using up all our time, But in Jesus, we are invited into those fears because of the power, love, and self-control we are offered as we rest in him. In all these ways and more, we find what we need in Jesus. Even Jesus himself, in Mark 1, went off to a solitary place to spend time with God the Father. He knew his own need to rest and be present with God. And his imitation is something we need to follow. It is so important that we rest in God through keeping the Sabbath. Not only will it physically heal our broken bodies in ways that we need, it will provide us opportunities to let let us trust God in ways that break down the idols that keep us so busy. I admit this is something that I've been considering myself, and I've thought a lot about how I need to incorporate it into my life better. I'm as guilty as anyone of not intentionally following this enough, uh, but there is such good that comes from taking the Sabbath seriously. So let's try together to set one day a week apart for the Lord. Maybe it's Sunday, maybe not. Whatever day is best for you. We are not called to set aside a certain day of the week, but whatever day we can best rest and connect with God. Grab a notebook, open to a chapter in your Bible, and let God's word turn you toward him. It is so important for us to do this, and I truly believe that if we try to keep the Sabbath in our weeks and use it as an opportunity to draw nearer to God, we will see him work mightily in our hearts and in our lives. Let's pray.